Andy, make elements. We will continue to study nuclear physics. Let us just repeat what you have learned about the nuclear reactions that take place in the core of the Sun. We studied out with one hydrogen plus, which is nothing else than one proton, but we call it hydrogen. Another hydrogen atom consists of one proton and one neutron. These atoms are both hydrogen atoms, but one has nearly double as much mass as the other. If you add one more proton, you, receive, you get a high helium atom. This is called helium-3 because it has three particles, subatomic particles in its nucleus, two protons and one neutron. But because it has two protons in its nucleus, it is a different element from the one that has only one proton. What do you get if you add another neutron to this helium atom? You get helium-4 that has four subatomic particles in its nucleus and of course two of them have to be protons. Otherwise, it would not be helium. What we want to learn now is more about elements. So we know now two elements, hydrogen with one proton and helium with two protons. But we can have, there are known elements now, 118 known elements. So the element with the maximum number of protons has 118 protons in its nucleus. We double click the start button behind uh, A make 118 elements and we see this screen with some data on it. We next double click nucleus and we will see here, if we have one proton, we know this already now, that is hydrogen. And we know that the symbol for hydrogen is H. And if it is only one proton and no neutron, it is hydrogen one. Now, if we add a neutron to it, we have hydrogen two. Of course, you know, if we add another proton, we will have helium, and this is helium-3. We will add now another neutron, and we have helium-4. There are now two letters we have to learn about. One is the letter Z, and one is the letter A. The letter Z stands for the atomic number. This is the number of protons in a nucleus. The atomic number Z is the number of protons in a nucleus of an atom. So the Atomic number Z for helium is 2. The number A is called the mass number. This is the number of protons plus the number of 
uh, neutrons. So helium-4 has two protons and two neutrons, so the mass number is 4. There are three different ways of char characterizing a, an element. Number one, you see here, helium-4. And you see that the mass number, A, is written with a hyphen before, behind helium. Now, where is the atom number, Z? Well, you know that helium has always an atomic number, Z equals 2. So you really don't need to say it. But if you want to write it down, you can use it in this way by taking the symbol HE and write the atomic number in a subscript. And you can also write the mass number in a superscript. That means lift it up and one is down. In addition, you can also write the electric charge of the nucleus. You know that the nucleus from helium has two positively charged subparticles. Each has the charge of plus one E. So the total charge of the nucleus of helium is always 2 plus. Let's go back to hydrogen. We do this by just taking out one proton. So we have hydrogen now and this is hydrogen 3 but we just want to have hydrogen 1 which is the most abundant in nature. Now put the labels on. Where do you find the atomic number? This is the atomic number. And the mass number is three times. You find it once here. This is the mass number. This is the mass number. Or you can also write it this way. And the electric charge is 1 plus because it has only one proton and the proton has a charge of 1 E. Now let us look at all the elements that have one proton, two protons, three protons, up to ten protons. P plus proton, one proton, is hydrogen. Two protons is helium with this symbol He. Three protons is lithium with the symbol Li, beryllium, Be, boron, B, carbon, C, nitrogen, N, oxygen, O, fluorine, F, neon, 10. Let's do it backwards.
hydrogen is the only element that can do without neutrons. All other elements need neutrons to be stable and they need just the right numbers of neutrons so for to be stable. So for instance, there is a hydrogen atom that has one proton and one neutron. The, the most hydrogen atoms have only one proton. But a small percentage of hydrogen atoms have a, a proton and a neutron. It's about 1% of all hydrogen atoms have a proton and a neutron. You can have a hydrogen atom that has two neutrons in addition to its one proton. That would be hydrogen 3. But that atom is not stable. It would uh, transform itself into another element. You call an element that has the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. These are isotopes. So hydrogen has an isotope that has only one proton. It has another isotope that has one proton and a neutron. And there is another isotope of hydrogen that has one proton and two neutrons. Helium has two protons and there is one isotope that has only one neutron. But there is another that is called helium 3. But there is another isotope that has two neutrons in addition to its two protons. All isotopes have the same atomic number Z. So all helium isotopes have two protons, Z equals two, but they have different number mass numbers. So the mass number for could be helium three and helium four. To remember what isotopes are, look please, double left click on that question mark here and a definition for isotopes come up. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different number of neutrons. Same number of protons, number of neutrons different. Let us have a look at the isotopes for carbon. You know that all carbon atoms have six protons. So let's put in six protons, three, four, five, and six. So we have six protons and there is a, a carbon 11. So in addition to its six proton, it has five neutrons. So this is C11 or you can write it this way. The isotope C11 or carbon 11 is produced in a laboratory. That's why it's called synthetic. You don't find that in nature. You have to have f nuclear physicists creating that in the laboratory and half of all the atoms will fall apart within 20 minutes. That is called half-life time. There is another carbon isotope that has six 
protons and six neutrons. So we add another uh, neutron and now we have carbon 12. The mass number A is 12. The atomic number Z always stays 6. And 98.9% of all carbon uh, atoms are on this earth are carbon 12 atoms and they are stable so they stay under the condition of our earth for ever as long as our earth lasts in addition there is a carbon 13 isotope that has only 1.1% of all the atoms on this earth are carbon-13. We call that natural abundance, Na. And in addition, a natural occurring carbon isotope is carbon-14, but that is unstable and it falls apart. Of this, there's only a very, very small amount. R right click on nucleus to make this uh, nucleus disappear and double left click on mass that will list now all the uh, 118 elements and you know that each element differs from each other from the by the number of protons in its nucleus so if you know the number of protons in the nucleus you can tell me exactly which element it is for instance eight number eight z equals eight so this top number here is the atomic number z equals eight is always oxygen z equals 47 is always silver z equals 97 is berkelium and you see here the mass number for Bicalium is 247. So it has 97 protons and the mass number is 247. So you calculate the number of neutrons by deducting 97 from 247. That means that this Bicalium has 150 neutrons. It is fascinating that these are the building blocks of our world. You need only 118 elements to construct everything you can see in our universe. And you need only a few elements to construct life. These elements are C, H, N, O, P, and S. Schnapps. Double click on the tiles to see the name, the symbols, and mass number as well as atomic number. It is not a bad idea to memorize the first 10 or 20 elements of the periodic table, but it is not necessary to know them all by heart.